Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Today is September 16, 2011. We are at the Chuklam Monastery for our weekly meditation session. How are you today? <clears throat> Welcome all, and I'm very happy to see you back. Last night, um, about uh, 2 a.m., 2 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, I received a phone call from um, a very close uh, family and member. And uh, the family let me know that uh, one of my young students, he uh, passed away suddenly because of his uh, heart attack. He is only uh, 43 years old. I really shock because he is a healthy man. And uh, yesterday morning, he's still very active, very happy. And uh, when he returned to his office and he sit down to work and he collapsed. For a while later, the uh, clerk did not see him to show up. She went into his office, and when she knocked on the door and opened the door, and she realized he already collapsed beside his table. They called emergency, but uh, when the whole family came to the hospital and the doctor went out and Say sorry, he's gone. <clears throat> I was um, I was really shocked and very sad. I practiced uh, sitting meditation right in my room and uh, reflect about life. And I really, I really. Um, feel and touched the word fragile. Life is really fragile. And I and I, I ask myself how long we live and what is the purpose of living? Of course we have learned, we have discussed, we have talked about a lot about this. But sometimes something coming to us, unexpected, we still question. We still question, why? How come? And uh, I have, um, I have, uh, we have learned we have learned that um, because life is that, that fragile. So therefore we have to love each other. We have to live deeply in the present moment and appreciate every moment we have. We cannot tell what will be happen to each of us. We can't. Sometimes I have uh, talked to some patient, and they told me that I, I just back from a death. That means they are really sick, and they plan, they're ready to go. But very fortunate, they got healed. They're still alive. And that patient, she told me, Thay, now I can really understand the scary of death. And uh, I'm willing and ready to let go of all anxiety, all the difficulties. I don't want to attach and suffer to anything anymore. 
Every day now I live with my family, my husband, my children. I just happy with that day because I plan to go already. But very lucky I'm still here. <clears throat> the Buddha taught us we have to live with the truth. Life is full of suffering, then please do not create more suffer. To suffer ourselves, to suffer our loved one anymore. Let put wholeheartedly to create, to cultivate something, to make peace for ourselves, to make peace for others. And if we have to go, we have to leave. We have nothing else to regret. And I think this gentleman, he is taking refuge in the five, uh, the five precepts under me. I name him uh, with the Dharma name Tranquility Heart. His wife, Dhamma name, calmly, calm, the, the, the garden of calmness. And he is the tranquility heart. And I think he has nothing to regret. Because he has done his best as a husband, as a father, as a son-in-law, as the son to his parents, as a brother, as a nephew, he have done. He's a very happy person, very active, very happy, very honest, sincere. Every time when I come there to visit their family, he show up and with all the joke and smiling and helping, So we, when we come here as a baby, as a newborn baby, we cry. And the people surround us, they're happy because we are a healthy baby. If the baby, the new, newly baby just born and the baby does not cry, we have to tap and, and make sure the baby cry. So when we cry, People around us, they're smiling, they laugh, they're happy. Then we have to live in such a way that when we leave, we laugh, but they cry. And that is the beautiful quote. We should remind ourselves, we have to live in such a way. When we die, when we leave this world, we have happy to go. we smiling, but the people stay back. They farewell us with their tears. Live with our truth. Be honest, be truth. And the Buddha said, In, can you imagine if a, if a person, there is nothing we can trust about that person and what kind of that person is. So we are, not, we are not allowed to turn ourselves as a person that no one can trust because of our unmindful speech, unmindful action, unmindful thought. There was a... Um, one time at the time of a uh, lot of war happened in the country and a lot of children are hungry and there was a, a very rich man who willing to offer bread to all the children every day and one day he brought a basket of bread and a lot of kids come out and try to to get the biggest one 
And you know when they make the bun, they make the bread, the, the, the shape is never exactly the same. And they try to, to, they try to take the biggest one. And one of the young girls who was left out by a lot of children, she have to stay behind and, and come and become the very last person to get the very small one, the smallest one in the basket. The next day, she, they treat her the same. And the owner, the rich man, he stayed be, be, be behind. He saw all everything. So on the third day, he offered the bread the same. But this time, when this young girl, she is the last person who has the bread, when she, after she bite the bun, she realized there was six dollars in that bun, inside of the bun. She, she brought the six dollars back to the owner and say, Dear sir, I think by mistake people drop money in this bun. And I accidentally got this bun with six dollars. And I think this, is, this belong to you, so I want to give you back. And this man said, no, no, it's your, it's your money. She said, no, no, I don't come here for money. You only give us bread. You only give us bun. You don't give us money. So this is the money I pick in the bread, in the bun. It's not belong to me. I give it back to you. And this rich man said, my young girl, I have stand behind you for three days already. I have saw how people treat you and how honest you are. And your honesty is valuable. More than six dollars you should have. This is a gift for you. The gift of your honest. But your honesty is more valuable, more expensive than six dollars I gave you. I like the story. So remember that no, ma no matter how much money we have, but if we have no honest within ourselves, we cannot do anything. So the very important thing we should cultivate in this life is our honestly. And I believe they, we used to say, honestly is the first policy. Live with the truth. There is a, a, a lady who wrote me a letter. Thai. How come this life always bring me, brought to me difficulties? I want a normal life. I want a normal life. And I reply her letter. My sister, the normal is life of life is difficulties. Can you imagine how much difficulties we have to deal every day or every week or at least once a month or twice a month at work, at home, sometimes with our children, sometimes with our spouse, sometimes with our relatives, our family. It's not more. Because we don't see it's not more, that's why we, it looks like it's unnormal. <clears throat> the father-in-law of this young man have a very wise um, thought. He said, Thai, he told me last night, Thai, maybe he have skipped the two signs of suffering of this life. 
Usually we have four signs of suffering. Living is suffering. Old age is suffering. Sickness is suffering. Death is a suffering. Dying is suffering. But he escaped too. He escaped old age. He escaped sickness. He just born, live, and die. There is a suffering, but he still can look at it with another positive way. Why is that? Because now he understands deeply that his daughter, that means the wife of the deceased, deeply suffer. But if he continue to water the negatives, and she can be really, really down. The wife was sitting there last night too, and we talked. So that's why we have to see that this life of suffering. But we are the practitioner. We should reflect. We should cultivate and tell ourselves, I vow to offer joys to one person in the morning and relieve the suffering of one person in the afternoon. That is our vow. And this is one of our, one of the two sentences. These are the two sentences in our refugee chant. Sáng cho người thêm niềm vui, chiều giúp người bớt khổ. I vow to offer joy to one person in the morning and relieve one suffer of a person in the afternoon. And what are those? That is compassionate. That is loving kindness. I told my, my, my young students a lot of time, my dear, to show your loving kindness, you don't have to do anything much. All you need to do is practice, live happy together, be harmony together, love each other. Those are all the big gift for Thai. You want to show your gratitude to Thai. Build up your brotherhood. Build up your relationship. And try to let go, try to accept, try to help, try to encourage the negatives of each other. If you only water the negative of your brother, the negative will be increased. That's the law. If you, you see the negative of that person, but you also can see the positive of that person, try to water that positive, to make that positive bloom. And that is the good action. And that is the beautiful way to show our love. I used to point out the mistake of my students. But that's not it. I offer them how to fix this. It's the same as I have mentioned a few times with you a few weeks ago. When you receive a quiz, an ex, a, a, a quiz, a test with a, uh, um, an X and try to fix it to make it make sure you have a right correction. That is life and that is the purpose of our practice. Buddhism does not talk anything 
very far from the reality. Because Buddhism is the way of life. And life has suffered in this way. And you have to cultivate in such a way to, to help this to be transformed. Don't wait until we go to heaven to transform. Don't wait until we go to the pure land of the Buddha in order to transform. The pure land is here. Soon you have transformed your negatives. Soon you transform your suffer. The, the land of happiness is here. Self, uh, self-arrangement, self-teaching is also very important. Yesterday night uh, when I have the class with the young monks and I told them this, be a teacher of yourself. For instance, when you are lazy and you can say, you can teach to yourself, lazy is not a good sign. Diligently is a good sign. Stand up and do your work. I remember when, maybe 10 years ago, when the young monks uh, first, very beginning in the temple, and every day we do some kanji, very little kanji to make an offering every evening. They're lazy to clean up the, the pot. They just leave the pot like that. And the next day they continue to use that pot and cook again. And they take turn to take the kanji and clean the pot. Every day when I come downstairs and I heard some complaint about the pot was not clean yet. I said, just leave it there. I find out who will take care for that day. And I have talked to that, that young man. I ask, if, I, if, to, if today you use this bowl for dinner and you don't wash the bowl, can I offer you again, put some more food back to your bowl that you did not wash yesterday? Do you want to have? No, no, it's dirty. I say, so, same thing. Something you don't want, never do to others. You want a clean bowl for dinner, then make sure you clean the pot. You don't want clean bowl for dinner, others the same. They don't want, they don't want the same. So you want people to love you, Love people first. Something you do first is very clever, very smart. You want people to help you, help them first. That's the law of practice. Teach yourself about that. And if we're able to teach ourselves like that, what happens? We look very beautiful. Not only the outside, the surface, but when people mention about that person, oh, he's a beautiful person. We are beautiful right in our action, our words. Uh, We are beautiful in there, in everybody's mind and heart. We are hero. We don't do anything. We don't fight. We don't do anything, but when we talk about that person, they will say, wow, he's a wonderful person. We did not do anything, but how come we become wonderful? Because we have lived with our truth, with our self-teaching, with our patience, and with our, with our letting go. We know how to accept, we know how to open our heart, accept people. In Buddhism, we don't refuse anyone. We don't push anyone out. Remember that. You want to help that person. The first thing you have to do is 
accept that person exactly as who they are in order to help. Let example, you are the tailor. People bring us, uh, bring you um, a shirt to fix. Oh, first of all, you have to accept this is the unfit size shirt. That's why they bring it to you to fix. If it already fit, you don't need to fix. And as a good tailor, you have to say, I can fix all kind of dress or blouse of, you know, advertising. Same thing. Because we are not calm yet. That's why we need practice. We need meditation. When I ask someone to practice in some snow tie, I can't because I am unable to sit down and calm myself yet. Let me wait until I'm calming and I will practice. I said, you, you don't practice, how can you be calm? <laughs> that is very true, right? Because we are not calm yet, that's why we need meditation every day. So I ask, I request, all the Sangha, just spend five to ten minutes every day to practice. Compared to 24 hours of our living, it's five or ten minutes, it's nothing. But it's really something if we are able to do it. It's really something. I don't know, have you ever experienced about this? Every time when you can, you can able to tame your anger, are you happy? You're able to tame your fast react, and you, because you know when you react with your hot temper, you have created a lot of breaking in your relationship. After you overcome that anger, you're really happy. I practice and I feel that. Of course, sometimes we're unable to tame, we just explode. And that after we explode, we regret. How can I say that? How can I do that? But when we say, how can I, things are already done. But every single time when we're able to tame our anger, we're able to be very happy. Why we need to take refuge in the Dharma? Because the, the teachings of the Buddha, which we call the Dharma, has the capacity to transform and to help us to overcome when we are in the very difficult situation. Usually, when we, have, uh, when we are angry, when we are sad, when we are so boring, what we do? We are playing game, we go to the bar, we go to the club, we, you know, we gambling. Those are all the methods. Those are all the instruction. Do we think, oh, this can help us to overcome our boring, our suffer? But after everything done, things the same. But the the waste of the money, the waste of our health is come back to us. The more we drink, the more we get sick. The more we gambling, the more we lost our money. Things are not solved yet. But in the reality, we have lost ourself, our personality, our money. 
But the teachings of the Buddha are different. The Buddha taught us, when you suffer, instead of explore, you should find a spot, sit down quietly, calm yourself, breathe first, go back and look deeply to the root of your suffer to see why that happened before you blame the others. After you come, you also will solve the problem. But this time, your words contain mindfulness. Your action contain mindfulness. You're able to solve the problem more soft, more gentle, more easy. Why don't we do it? Usually when we're angry, we just say something we want. We just explore exactly whatever we want. But after we explore, we, doesn't look, we don't look like anything. So taking refuge in the Dharma is really neat. I make the strong vow. I will take refuge in the Dharma. What does taking refuge mean? I will come back and accept and direct my mind to this beautiful path, the path of love, the path of understanding. That is the meaning of the Dharma. Every single solution must contain love and understanding. Another word, compassion and wisdom. Anything we do in this life, any decision we make without understanding and love, we must know that is missing something. And I have really experience and and very touched and I can see the reality the truth is in this life we really need love anything we do with our loving our action cannot last long cannot touch that person, cannot embrace that person. Make sure everything we do, it must have love, understanding. When we cook for our loved one, we cook with our love. Not only the food we cook, not only the ingredients we put in, but the most beautiful ingredient, the first ingredient we should have, and that is the love. We will do it. We're willing to do it. We're happy to do it. We're happy to serve. And that is the reason why one of the, the evoking we, we should say is, I vow to be happy on the path of serving. Every time when you serve people, make sure you serve with your happiness. You bring Thai a glass of water, make sure you bring with your love. Oh, wow, well, I don't want to do it, but people force me to bring this glass of water to Thai. And you will put the glass of water down. I can realize it. This glass of water does not have any love in there. You see that every time when we come to the meditation and we sit down quietly and breathe, that's contain all the love already. Because you know that when you're able to calm yourself down, you're able to talk with your loved one. You're able to bring this peace back to your home. So the more you love your, your loved one, the more you should practice.
Because after you practice, you offer that person a lot of understanding. You can shine to that person a lot of your, your practice. They can feel it. Then they can permeate all your practice. Do you believe that? How do you feel when you come to this meditation hall? If you, you come to this meditation hall, you feel relaxed, you feel peace. That means every day the peace is blessed this hall. Because when we sit down here with 20 people, with 30 people, we have 30 people to bless for this hall with peace. The environment, we can feel it. When you step into some house and the environment is really cold, <laughs> the environment is really hot, you can feel it too. So that's why as a monk we have learned, when you step in the house, you should know when to stay, how much time you can stay and what time you should leave. <laughs> and that is the mindfulness. Be truth, be beauty, be good. Good, beauty, and truth can practice with the four things. Be truth, self-teaching, be patient, and let it go. When you're able to let things go easily, you really feel relaxed, very light. And that is the reason why when we bow, we put our hands on the forehead and we let these two hands down like this. It means what? Let it go. When you, your whole body down, when your whole body touch on the earth, you open your hands, open your heart and receive and learn. You want to become a very high person. First of all, you must low yourself down. That's why the hands on the forehead and low down the whole body. So bowing is a, teach, is a practice. We don't bow the Buddha at all, only. But we bow to our practice. Learn to be humble. The more you open, the more you receive, and the more you can, can learn. The more you drop down, the more you're happy. The more you let it go, the more you light. The more you release, the more you relax. We will say goodbye to someone we love at any time. So therefore, we should always remind us, let's live, love, and laugh. Laugh doesn't mean you laugh at someone's fault. Laugh means you happy to accept, to fit with the situation, and to help the others to transform. When the economy is very up, we live with that environment. When the economy is down, we should accept and try to live with the budget we have. No expectation. Because life is up and down is very normal. We say life is unnormal. But actually it's normal. Normal is what? Up and down. 
like ourselves. Now we're happy. Later on, we will be not happy. Before you come here, you are not happy. But after you sit here with a talk, you're happy. And sometimes we say, sometimes we ask ourselves, we are also unnormal. <laughs> you. Some people come to Thai and complain. Thai, I think that girl is not normal. I ask her, why? Why you say that? Because, you know, today when she see me, she didn't say hi. And I ask, and did you say hi to her? No, why I have to say hi to her? And I said, then you also not, um, not normal. The normal is people don't say hi to us, we still say hi to them. That is normal in us. They are not normal. And we also the same. So if we look deeply into this life, the up and down, the suffering, the happiness, the gain, the loss, the, the, mm, everything like that is what? It's normal. The one who wins will be happy. The one who lost will be suffer. There are always two facts of life. what we call the, 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 the facts of life. Happy, unhappy. Happiness, suffering. Lose and gain. Loss and gain. So if we're able to see it, we cultivate the balance in our life within our thinking, our life. Don't, don't do something unbalanced. And then we will be very suffer if things happen. I thought uh, the young kids, when you wake up in the morning, Fold up your blanket. Fold your blanket. Folding your blanket every morning to show your gratitude, to show your love, and to show how is your life begin with, how is your day begin with. Why? The blanket is a piece of fabric that helps you to cover your body and keep you warm for the for the whole night. So when you, after you use it, do you appreciate the blanket by folding the blanket nice and neat? If you're able to arrange your bed, fold your blanket in the morning, you just make your, your beginning of the day, you know, completely, you know, in order, in arrangement, in, in a nice way, and in a very neat way. That is how we begin our day. You don't have to name it a practice, but it is really a practice. It is really a practice. You make yourself happy with your room first, with the place where you sleep for a few hours first. Arrange your bed, Fold your blanket, put your slipper nice and knit back on the shelf. After you school, hang up your coat. Put your socks in a, somewhere in a basket, you know. Try to arrange your life, every single thing like that. When you grow up as an adult, you're able to know how to manage your work, your practice, your family. Because you're able to do small things when you are young, then when you grow up, you're able to arrange everything. How can I share with the kids in that way? Because I have lived, I have practiced like that when I was young. I teach myself that way. 
In the summertime, I have wrote down my own schedule. What time I wake up, what time I breakfast, what time I do my homework, what time I do the Buddhist study, what time I'm doing the chanting. I wrote my own schedule in the summer break. And I told the young people, my, all my young students, do not allow yourself to have free time without learning. No one can say, I am successful in my life with my career because I play game all day. No one say that. And there is no one able to successful in their whole life with their Nintendo, their <laughs> Game Boy. I do not say that you cannot play game. But you should know that game is only the entertainment for fun. Sometimes you need to relax and you play. But find the gentle game to play. Violence game are not able to play. You want to relax, but why don't you find something you know really relax? You find some fighting, some violence, you put all your, your you know, you're staring your eyes at that and you, you try to yell and along with the game. In that moment, you are not rest at all. You just increase your more violence, your yelling, your, you know, a lot of negative within you. Reflect on that. I see when the kids, they play game. Come on, let's go, let's go, go over here, over here. You know, all the yelling things like that. And they say, I'm enjoyed, I don't see anything enjoyable there. Am I right? <laughs> Entertainment, resting is something, you know, you really relax. Sometimes I play the, um, the natural music while I'm doing some work. But someday I found still really noisy too. I turn off. Just totally quiet for me to read and to do some work. Sometimes the music that we use to listen every day, it's still too noisy for us. So today I brought out some of my viewing about reflecting and practice to share with the Sangha. These are all my practice. And I used to mention, I am not a philosopher. I am a practitioner. So anything I share with you, is based on my daily practice. Any experience I have, I bring it out and share with my brothers, my sisters. I'm very, to, I'm very happy to see you every week. I'm very happy to sit and practice with you every Friday. I'm very happy to walk with you peacefully every step together. Let us be happy, be relaxed, and breathe in the same environment. Every morning, the monk, one of the monks, ringing the bell and chant, the Dhamma Kaya, that means the body of the Dhamma, shining brightly, beautifully in the morning. Sitting down, sitting here quietly with this beautiful environment and your peaceful smiling, you make a very strong vow. 
you will walk into this new day with your wholeheartedly. The, the sun of the wisdom, the sun of understanding shining everywhere, every step of your path. That is the, the gatha, the words that the monk recite every morning to the Sangha. Your body is a physical body, but if you know how to combine the teachings within your, deeply into your body, your body automatically becomes the Dharma body. The Dharma body radiates beautifully in the morning, sitting here quietly with this peace environment, you smiling and make a strong vow. You will walk into this new day with peace, with mindfulness. The sun, the sun of understanding will shine brightly to all your path, with all your steps. I hope you enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week. We have some mooncake downstairs. Please come downstairs for mooncake and tea for refreshments. Can we sing a song? What song are we looking for? Do you remember the song, Happiness is Here and Now? Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. No longer in a hurry. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Somewhere to go, something to do, but no need to hurry. One more time, please. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. No longer in a hurry. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Somewhere to go, something to do. But no need to hurry. Enjoy the three sounds of the bell with your breathing.